This is Steve Weiner. I used to write for The David Letterman Show. This is Mike Chisholm, who spent an entire life dreaming of being on The David Letterman Show and will never happen. Watch his podca podcast instead. La, 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 la. Welcome once again to The Letterman Podcast. My name is Mike Chisholm. This is our trick-or-treat episode. Uh, the treat is we have Sue Hum, and she has come on the show uh, once again. Uh, for those of you who don't know, she was the uh, wardrobe costume designer, the head of uh, anything uh, clothing on Late Night with David Letterman and Late Show with David Letterman. Well over 30 years, Sue Hum is a legend. Many people saw her on screen many times. Come on on stage and berate David Letterman. That was a lot of fun. If you want to see a very cool uh, Sue Hum uh, uh, retrospective, go to the regular Letterman channel, the, the Letterman YouTube channel. Sue Hum has a staff favorite moments. Also, she has been on this show once before. Love Sue very, very much. She's come on here, and I think, I don't know, this is going to be a tradition. I hope it is, um, because there was a bit that ran every year for David Letterman, and that was uh, around Halloween time. He had a bit where uh, it, kids' Halloween costumes, this year's Halloween costumes, and what would happen was they'd build a set uh, with a front door, and there'd be a ding-dong sound or another uh, sound of some sort. Uh, Dave would open the door, and a child would walk in in a funny costume. Sue and her team, but Sue is the one that helmed that whole thing. The writers would bring her uh, ideas for these gags, and it was uh, um, uh, just a, a fantastic time of year for her, except it was also uh, a breakneck speed and, and trying to get these uh, amazing costumes built for this bit. And so this year, it's Halloween right now. Let's have Sue on, and we're going to go through. She's showing us some of her sketches and some of the uh, the, the costumes uh, as they were conceived, and then, of course, also to what appeared on screen. She has a whole bunch of memory about this. Uh, now, that's the treat. The trick is, and we're going to trick you a little bit here, because uh, it wasn't exactly the best technically sound episode. The internet connection on Sue's side was not great, so there are points where there are blanks that happen because uh, uh, she was... Um, she was frozen and there was no sound. And so I've had to edit as much of that out as I possibly can. I'm not a great video editor, as you all know. Uh, so that's kind of the trick of this episode, but still lots of very cool little tidbits. It's definitely worth putting the episode out for sure. And, um, and just Sue's a friend. She's a friend of the Letterman podcast. We're so excited about that. And uh, hopefully we'll be able to get her on uh, for years to come around this time of year. And we can go through some of these amazing costumes. And it's cool because I, I threw a couple at her that she wasn't ready for me to throw at her. And she had all these amazing memories. Um, the chapstick that boils over in your pocket. Yeah, the kid who was wearing that one, Barbara Gaines' son, Simon. Very cool. Uh, and lots of other little tidbits about this. So um, the Letterman Podcast, of course, brought to you by hello-deli.com. Go to hello-deli.com to get Late Show with David Letterman merchandise, like mugs, like shirts, like hats, and sold, of course, by and packed by personally. Um, the legendary Rupert G, who may not be running the Hello Deli anymore, but he's still running hello-deli.com. So, without further ado, the Letterman Podcast is proud to present Sue Hum. Sue, thank you for coming back on the Letterman Podcast. I appreciate your time very much. This is going to be a lot of fun today. Thanks uh, for having me. I'm, I'm um, honored. I didn't expect this, what happened in October. Yeah course it's right around from halloween yeah well and and your first time that you were on here so many people were excited um you know because I, the only the only uh time they ever saw you was when you were coming out on stage of course telling dave uh saying something derogatory to him and telling him to go shove it that kind of a thing um and yes. i just loved that you went into your background the last time that you were on and, and where you came from and it was just a natural that mm -hmm. at halloween we would have you back on because then we could focus on some of these costumes that you built. Because as we talked about off air, you put heart and soul and effort into these costumes. It was a big deal, these kids' Halloween costumes. Yes, yeah, so this segment was a big deal for 32 years. And then when you asked me about coming on to your podcast, I said, gee, let me count how many costumes I did just for that particular segment. And during that period of time, it's over 380 costumes. 380. Yes. Oh, man. Yes, 380 costumes, let alone uh, just the Daily Show. Um, 
but these 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 this was the big time of being very creative and um i i'd like to tell you um procedure and the and, and the way the collar the costumes evolve yep and how that segment happens yep. and i can go into that Absolutely. Uh, so let me start off with saying that mm, all the concepts come from writers yep and so they're being compiled uh about a couple of weeks uh the last week in september something starts buzzing yep. and and the collection of of ideals start to come and the uh uh i end up with about 12 total that i have to make only kind of nine get on mm -hmm. um so how it starts is that i get the list and i start sketching away but i give phone calls to uh, the writers to get a more definition of what yep. they mean because yep. word and 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 the physical side of something an image is two different things you know sometimes so by that time it's um first of october but i don't get started in actuality until i get the okay with head writers yeah. of all my sketches showing them the images to okay and certain ideals and changes and then in the two weeks of that madness it is pure madness because i am doing that segment let alone the daily show yep so i am running <clears throat> around first of all how to get the supplies to the costume prop shop that i use and i have used one um uh, shop named geppetto studios and you we connect and you don't have to to explain and you know the the shop's skill scott yep. Manampi. he's he's so skillful and we unstable it says over here um uh my, yeah, my like you said, you don't have the greatest uh you don't have the greatest Wi-Fi, but we're just gonna keep going with it. No okay, problem. yeah, something is wrong. Yeah. So I can I get all the supplies because when I'm doing seven and eight year old or maybe younger, yeah. I I have to think in terms of materials that I use. Uh <clears throat> and I use something called mini mini cell phone for, for the most part. And and I'm I'm getting all the supplies that are light because children d don't know how to balance weight. You know they have to walk to the right of stage to all the wardrobe people that are guiding them off. You know, yep. so in those two weeks, I I am dealing with material graphics, and I had used as company. And I would do these all after hours. Uh, um, you know, the costume shop is not in Manhattan. It's in Brooklyn, Sunset Park. That takes me an hour by train to get there. Oh and God. the graphic people are in Jersey City, New Jersey. I get there too by, by a tr public transportation. Yep. But then I use the same people because we're all on the same page and they know exactly what I mean, you know? And once I I go into the shop in those two weeks, I'm in there every night seeing the progress, telling them what corrections, what proportions, the night before Halloween show. Yep. And the Halloween show could be, and that's usually a double taping, it could be on the first show or the second show, accordingly to the yep. dates of all the years gone by. <laughs> yeah. I, and, uh, and, oh, go ahead. And, 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 you know, I tell you, the staff really looks forward to that Halloween day. They, everybody has fun. Everybody has fun. Yeah. At what, at day. what point did you start using staff? staff's children for okay. the episodes was that at the beginning or was that uh something that you did later on in the run 
All right. When we were at NBC, yep. we use all actor yep. children. Then when we went to CBS, we started using some actors and some some staffer nieces. Yep. You know, it all became that. Yeah. Uh, was and there one you preferred? One I preferred. Yeah, did you did you prefer actors or was it did you like the staffers kids? You know, it was just fine. You know, <laughs> it was just fine. You know, um the actor kids were were pretty much uh knew knew what to do. I mean, got you know little actor kids, they're yep. marvelous. They they they're always uh uh listening and doing exactly what you said, you know. Yep. They were adorable ones here, yeah, and they were adorable ones. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I I just imagine we've got some pictures here that we're going to show later on in the episode, and and uh, one of the years that we picked was 2013. And when you think about it, <clears throat> those kids into that ten years ago, they're all adults now. I know. <laughs> Isn't that weird? That's 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 that's, that's kind of trippy. It. Uh, did you ever see any of the kids that you had in any of your stuff, and then see them later on in life? Only on Facebook when I tune into my friends yep. uh, and see what's happening and they post something, some family outing or vacation. And I, I would see how, how big they were and how grown up they were, how they changed, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I would see them by then. Yeah. Usually I have not seen them, you know, in person. Um. I want to go back to some of the stuff you talked about in the process. So you talk about the writers. Were there any particular writers over the years that were either assigned or or they kind of specialized in the Halloween costumes? Or was it a random, like it was every writer was a part of it? Every writer was a part of it. You know, every writer. Yeah. You know, in the beginning, when I was at NBC, you know, there were particular ones that did that, like, Steve O'Donnell and mm -hmm. I, I don't know who the writer was. It might have been Joe Toplin. I, I'm not sure. Yeah. Yeah. Just don't know that. <laughs> no, no, that's that's cool. Um and I want to know the difference between the workshops. Your workshop at NBC versus your workshop at uh at the Ed Sullivan Theater. Um did you have more room in the Ed or was it uh was it uh, because NBC had such a big footprint in that building was it was it were there more resources there i'll tell you um in nbc the design department had a whole floor to themselves where they had work tables yeah and and they had the graphic designers there and set designers from the other shows were there yep. so we were like a whole big family there when we moved over to uh cbs i only had a um there was no war workshop, zero workshop, only storage. Wow. So <clears throat> I would go and I had no time. I had time. Time was of the essence, you know. It's everything was done. A lot of the stuff was done in 24 hours and two days yep. uh, of the other costumes regarding the show. But this one, I had a little time, but still, they would write more more costumes for the the Halloween show and and that has still had to be run to the shop. Yeah. And where was the shop in relation to the Ed Sullivan Theater? Like where did you work? The shop was in Sunset Park. I don't know if you know where where Sunset Park is. That's a train ride by the D train in the lower depths of Brooklyn. Okay, so that's the Brooklyn shop you were talking about. Now yeah. Okay, so in a in a in a work day, because obviously, you know, like you said, you've got the show that's going on every single day, and you're having to make sure Dave is dressed and whatnot. You had a staff though too, right? You had Rodney and and you had you had a couple of people who could help with some of this load, right? Actually, no, no, Rodney, Rodney was Rodney was only there for I don't know two two years, yeah. something like that. But I had an assistant, uh, Juliet, and I had Isabel uh, at, at times. And then I had a wardrobe uh, girl, head of wardrobe, Natalie. 
Yep. Uh, and she would, at that time on Halloween, hire about four other handlers. That's <laughs> the only time. You know, Cho was a uh, cha-ching budget day conscious. Yep. You know? Yeah, budget conscious. Uh, but um, that's how it worked. I would solely go there in the morning and then or after after the show i would end up being there 11 o'clock at night yeah i can only imagine um at that time how much how much of your time would it be 50 50 in the in the theater versus other places or were you the majority of your time were you in other places during that time majority of the time um i was at the show okay and i, I had to you. do that after the show Showtime was over. I went and got the train to go to Sunset Park. Long that days. Was an hour. And I would be there every day for two weeks. Wow. Every day at night. Yeah. Just to see and to control uh, what, what was happening and making sure things were specific, even though we had good communication, you know, color, shape, everything had had to uh be considered yeah it, they were fantastic to work with scott Malampi and his crew all the crew were art students from college you know oh that's so they all cool. had a head, head of sense sense of something yeah um uh, and and like you said uh we talked about this off camera a little bit uh before we hit the record button a lot of these costumes, you know, they're ornate, they're 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 delicate. You put all this time and effort into them, and then the moment the Halloween episode is over, they're ready to get thrown away. But you you couldn't bear to throw some of that the parts of those costumes away. You have a lot of costume uh, accessories in your place, don't you? Well, you know, I have the actual costume because the ones that I saved. Are, be, are the ones that I had to do a lot of ingenuity thought unless it was too large. Yeah. And I, I just, like one was the four opter, or four opter to examine your eye eyes for yeah. glasses. That that took a bit of doing, you know, uh, of figuring out and how to harness the the costume to the child's body. Yep. Yeah. And uh, those were all quick changes. And, and then it, all became that the size of the children, which I took their measurements through telephone calls with the parents, but they had to be a universal size because they changed out children to other costumes if they they struck a costume. So it had to fit, you know? It just had to fit universally. So yeah. I had a universal seven-year-old size, you know? So there had to be some flexibility there because yeah, uh, Dave would even, Dave would even joke about that sometimes, you know, you'd see, uh, you know, uh, the same child in the same sketch two or three oh, yes. times or whatever. Yeah. Yes. You would see that. So, Oh yeah. Yeah. That happened a couple of times. Yeah. So let's, uh, let's, let's bring the viewer back to the viewer of this show who, uh, you know, maybe they were a fan of the show. Uh, maybe uh, they're just kind of catching up. The segment was basically the same. I went back and looked at the original segments all the way to the very last one. The segments were almost identical. And I mean, if you think about that, 32 years of the same, you know, annual segment, uh, a little set was built that was supposed to be Dave's house. And and there was a door. And, yeah. and basically there'd be a, you know, a sound effect of a doorbell or something. Else, yes. And Dave would open the door. And 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 a child would walk in, and the costume yeah. that the child was wearing was um, unconventional, and 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 it was a, a comedy piece. Um, were there ever times where the um, you know either at uh, at rehearsal or or coming up, did costumes ever get cut? Like, did you you know if it's eight or nine for the segment, you had ten or eleven there, and then they would cut it last minute and say, ah, yeah, no, it's not quite uh, what we were looking for. Did that ever happen? All costumes were approved. Image wise, yep. they were cut by choice of what was funny. Yeah. What was amusing, you know? That's that's how they were cut. Um, yes, uh, you would think. Uh I you know, there there was always a meeting after after rehearsal. What who's the sequence 
of who's going first, who's going last for the laugh to build it up. I mean, yep. all all that's it, you know is, is is considered, you know, and it's the head writer. And I think Barbara Gaines is in in, in it all the time, yep. uh, doing the finalizing. You know, you know that before showtime, uh, everybody is in Dave's dressing room, chomping down the minutes and the seconds and and how it's going to go because it's up to Dave to make it a show when when uh, we're on and he, he is so concerned about that it's Every so day. funny talking to you about this sue because you know I, I i've talked to so many writers and and these writers have these comedy pieces some of them that uh go all the way you know these extras that would be filmed beautiful pieces uh, you know cut down to about a three minute um you know uh you know video presentation and then just before the show yeah no and it would never get aired it's interesting i know that in this you you went through the same thing in this in this place here oh, you yeah. know you go through all this work and you build this costume but at the same time it might look beautiful and whatnot but if it just didn't fit the sensibility or 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 somebody's mood was off either Dave's or one of the writers or somebody they say yeah no we're not going to use it and all of that work didn't happen was that frustrating or did you just learn to roll with it you know I knew that when I do twelve I know eight or nine are only getting in. And, you know, I am so busy that yep. I cannot be concerned. I wished something would go on that something that like took a lot of effort and thinking yep. on, 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 on something like there was a URL bottle that yeah. the child was inside and it took a lot of technical buying a, 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 a machine that would melt the, the acrylic plastic into shape and bend it uh, while it's hot and all that uh, so that you didn't see any seams and anything that was technically a big undertaking I, I sort of got a little disappointed yeah yeah no I get that's that's perfectly natural because these costumes are amazing um, I'm going to share the screen right now and show one an example of one um, you know, and you think about this. So there's one where a child was going to be Downton Abbey. Can you see that? Yes, yes, yes. So that was, you know, and I just, I just love it so much. Like, look at this sketch. Like, were you familiar with the show Downton Abbey or did you have to research oh, I, what it was? I watched that religiously and, and, and I've, I found that Downton Abbey was in a state of the high clear castle. Yep. And, um, you know, I, I work with ads company. Now that's in Jersey city to yep. do that, uh, to conceive how we're going to get that through the door. We measure the, I measure the door all the time to see if, if what, what gets fit in. And, um, so we boiled it down to cutting it in half. And I said, I am never going to get that image on unless I do some, relief and photographs so it took uh, uh, a graphic designer there to hone down take the the castle's little um what do you call those steeples on the yep. side the corner and we knew the child was going to be in the center and i had to build it all the way around so we we honed it down and and these are the working working shots of of the logistics of how it had to be and, and also i had to figure out how to strap the the little little kid in there <laughs> um it, it took time and that, that was several times um of course that i don't i i said to to the ads company uh well now that Halloween's over would you like to have this back? Because I know it's going in the waste paper can. Yeah. So and you see all the it? working, working estimate. You see all the working measurements on my worksheet. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It, uh, and it turned out so beautifully. Um, and you know, it's funny watching Dave help them get through the door and all of that yeah. and, 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 and whatnot. Were, um, were you there? 
like as the kids are going out and they would walk off stage usually they wouldn't go back through the door they would they would walk out are you sitting there right beside the 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 door helping these kids get through there i'm the 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 wardrobe people are doing that yeah. but i'm back there i'm back yeah. there my main thing is making sure that the costumes is on their shoulder in position and the and i'm talking to the kids are they feeling comfortable and i'm telling them you know hold your trick or treat bag on the right babes on the right and be sure and speak up so they, everybody can hear you and the kids are pretty psyched you know there's a monitor right in front of the camera where dave is doing and most of the kids are looking at the monitor looking at themselves going on they're pretty psyched they're pretty psyched they're cute they're cute yeah <laughs> little adults you know absolutely um you know i just uh i look at the, some of these things and i just marvel at them um, um there's the faucet oh yeah a non-working automatic faucet yes and i just and uh, on that non-working one thing had to work of course there was a light that had to uh be on red or blinking yep <clears throat> and um of course um that was a big success a s silly ass thing like that a, a automatic f faucet uh when that came in the doors it was ginormous and the, that was made out of mini cell foam which was very light and um to, to make it silver, yeah. Uh, there's the sh shop, and I found out, you know, a lot of stuff. It's experimental. How does the pink go on to make it silver? Does it soak into the to 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 the foam? And 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 so we found uh, techniques to do that. Little simple things that you have in the shop you wouldn't know that would solve the solution. You know. There's another you know, one. I don't know when this one was used, but uh, another bathroom. Lots of bathroom uh, utensils and things like that. There's a floss stick right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That 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 brought out a howl uh, and a laugh, you know, <laughs> with that. And and of course that kid had to duck in a little bit at the door to come in. Yeah, and and those are all researched. I go online. And I research everything. This Arby's thing yeah. that was so successful that Arby's called the shop and wanted them to make one for them. Okay, things like that happen, but uh, they, they wouldn't pay the price. You you know things like that just don't don't you know it's not it's not a hundred dollars. You know, like like the Halloween costume you get now at those bought bought hot dogs or whatever yep. you see in, in, in the, in those uh, Halloween spirit costumes that yep. shops that come in temporarily, all that meat, you know, was all out of foam and individually sprayed and put together like a sandwich. And Maria Pope's daughter did that one. She loved it. She took that one home. I don't know if she still has it, but oh, she, I got to uh, ask. I, I saw Maria at uh, I saw Maria at Rupert's uh, yeah. <laughs> retirement party, and I got a chance to go up to her and tell her how many people uh, I've had a lot of people tell me how much they appreciate her, and 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 so um, that's really nice to hear. She's going to be. Uh, we talked about her coming on the show here, so hopefully, yeah, she's we'll have got her good ideas in the brain. Yeah, good ideas. I always respected that, you know, but. I, uh, uh, the idea of of uh, you know Arby's calling you up and saying, "Hey, can we have that?" Uh, that you you brought up cost. I, one of the questions I have here for you is, um, on a given year, do they give you a separate kind of budget for the Halloween costume segment? Is there a is is there a number that's there, or is it just whatever the writers came up? Your job was to dream it up and keep it as low as possible, or did you have a number you had to stay with? I'll tell you what, I go to the shop. And they bid on, I I they bid on and give me an estimate. Okay. And then I and and then I handle them. <laughs> and then I said, okay, that, that's that's worth it. Then I they I show them the and I show the uh, account in the budget. 
gotcha. at, at the show. And gotcha. it's acceptable. You know, let alone the, the 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 construction fee is separate from the material fee. Absolutely. And, yeah, totally separate, which I totally uh shop that because I know, you know, all these years you just know where to get it, you know it's gonna work, you know, anything. Yeah. That is uh yeah, that is a hell of a job. Um, let's but, see. Let's, you know, let's, I, go ahead. I forgot to tell you, I forgot to show you one that I thought was successful. You know, one is the New York City garbage can after a heavy rain. There's nothing but broken uh, umbrellas all strewn all over the place <laughs> in, 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 in the waste paper can. So, so, so I go to the shop. They've done it, and I've got this mesh that I get at Home Depot to yep. go around something that's very light to simulate uh, a a trash can. And um, one of his workers thought it, it was really easy to do that. So he busted up a lot of the umbrellas that I got, you know, cheap yep. umbrellas. And, you know, they have you have to put a kid in the middle, and you have to design so we busted up a few more umbrellas. <laughs> Got to be careful with those points. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> um, here, let's see what else we got here. Oh, the uh, I have a little bit of technical difficulty here on this one, unfortunately. Yeah, I, I maybe it's my play. No, 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 no. I love this one here. Oh, Mayor yeah. That is, that, at the podium. That's yeah, fantastic. That is so funny. <laughs> And you see my little sketch on the metal metal brace to hold it up because all this is made out of a gator board, which is like styrofoam. Yeah, so it's got to be really light, light for those kids, right? Oh, yeah, it's got to be light. And then this is all in the front of him. You know, he's got to steady himself. You know, yeah, that 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 that. And then see the logo. I had to have that logo yep. uh, printed out at, at a graphic. Place. because the graphic designer of the show is busy with the show yeah every day <laughs> but then oh every day but i get to tell him uh send that disc over uh pull it and send that disc over because that'll help with the cost of the costume that just have the disc sent over to him so all you have to do is pop it in you know then yeah, of, there was disc, you know. One of the things that, uh, oh, look at the Crocs. Look at the Crocs yeah. there. Yeah, the, that, 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 that was such a fun thing. You know, but I don't, I, I don't know when, you remember when the Crocs were so popular and everybody, everybody had them. Yeah. Everybody had them. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That's still one of them. Uh, there were so big, the, the shop. Uh, Geppetto took them, you know. Um, and Geppetto now is upstate near Utica, you know. Um, oh, wow. Guess what? It's being priced out by the landlords and, and shops closed down yep. and sh shop, shops moved out of town. Uh, shops, costumes are using California. Yeah, times change. Times change. Absolutely. So now they're upstate. They were in uh, Geppetto's. Yeah, Brooklyn. yeah, they're now upstate. They're upstate. He's, yeah, he's doing well. He's doing well. I love oh, this that one. Was, Ted Williams' head. Oh, th that was hilarious. That was hilarious. <laughs> uh, and that was the real child's head in there. Of course. Uh, yeah. Of course, I had to have <laughs> air vents in the back. <laughs> 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 Yeah, that that was good. Oh, it was hoot, and that was that that that's a run over gecko, you know. <laughs> yeah, 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 and you know, real leaves, real tires, <laughs> stuff like that. Well, it and it's good. funny because some of them, like you say, are 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 like really ornate and and detailed, and they're very unique. Then there are some where you know it's more of a. Uh, it's just the tire tread, you know, this is a fairly yeah. simple costume as far as costumes go. Um, but then the tire tread and the, the comedy comes with the accessory to it. And, and, and it seems like every year 
there was a balance of both of those things. There was, uh, you know, really, really complex ones. And then also just a very simple joke as well. Well, well, you know, the people like Omar Gaddafi, yeah. Hugo Chavez, all those, uh, Tom Cruise and, yeah. and, 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 and his, his wife, you know, we would have, those kids dress up like that yeah oh of, of course this one i i had to go out and buy su sushi for my research <laughs> well of course <laughs> of course and play and play with the design you know and and the graphics yeah um and that 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 got changed out to another child that was rehearsal you see a lot of those pictures i gave you at rehearsal time yeah Oh yeah. yeah, absolutely. With the stangle yeah. there, a writer. Yeah. And there's a lot the, uh, more food. There's the initial. Yeah, a lot more food. Yeah, a lot of food. Yeah, of yeah. course. Oh yeah, the food ones are always good. Yeah, a little uh, food that. Let's see here. I've got uh... that one is that Which one, one? with the gasoline. Oh, well, let's see the gasoline. The golf station, yes. That that was a bit of doing, of doing that. You see, there's knobs on the sides to the left. Right there. Side. Yeah. Yeah, and the prices would change out, and those are triangles. And Dave, we had arrows on those uh, little knobs, so Dave knew which way to turn them, because the prices were going up and out. And I still have that one in my house because that that was like, let's get clever so it's humorous, you know? Yep. Yeah. Those little details of being able to turn the signs—that's great. You still have this one? Yes, I do. I don't oh, know what adorable. to do, but I have it. I have it. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah. Yeah. The concept and then the yeah. actual. Yeah. Very, you know, that's very important cool. with costume designers. You do. You do what your sketch says. Oh, yes. Halloween that. 04. So think about this for a second here. We're almost 20 years ago. And how much mileage does making fun of Donald Trump's hair have? I mean, gosh, that's almost a universal joke. We're talking decades oh, yes. now making oh, fun yeah. of Donald Trump's hair. Look at that. Oh, D Dave would just go at him when he was on, <laughs> on stage, you know. But, you know, Donald would come in and uh, I would, you know, D Dave would say, is that a toupee you're wearing? Yeah. And so I would always check Donald's hair out and walk behind him when he went into the stage door uh and 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 check it out uh he he just quaffed it he really his hair was thin but he was quaffing it sure and this was made out of raffia what's raffia, raffia? You, you know what raffia is it's a straw like ribbon like that is used in decorative decorations uh people use it to tie um presents or make raffia you know there you go making aesthetic choices oh that one an animal that cooking. one I love. oh gosh <laughs> you know you know the the people who make crayons what's it smith and crayola crayola yep. i wrote to them and i said i'm doing a um i'm doing a animal cracker send me that white play-doh stuff that dries that you 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 i i, I need a lot of it. so they send me tubs of this stuff <laughs> i molded it and when it was finished i i i send it send them the costume back to them it was a fun thing yeah that's hilarious yeah 97 uh... By the way, there are the kids after 2013 pizza yes. party. I assume yeah. that that would always be the tradition. The kids would always get a party in the green room. Yeah, yeah, they 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 like it. they they had a ball. Children had a ball. Oh. It was such a nice thing to do. Um. Okay, so here we go. We're gonna get some pictures of the actual show. This is a uh, this is all 2013 here. So this is a yeah. a seat obstructed by a pillar. Yes. So conceptual yeah. humor there. Yes. Yeah, intentionally that, intentionally use the same color as the Ed Sullivan Theater seats. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, and how to fit that a uh, beautiful little girl in into that seat to come in? You know, all that was very light. That that pole, 
is a Doric column. Yeah. <laughs> and she was beautiful. She was beautiful. Her name She's was in Brooke, that... by the way. Huh? Her name was Brooke, by the way. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. She was the stage manager's daughter. Oh, yeah. you're kidding. Oh, C yeah. This is CK. I, I, <laughs> Louis CK. I think this was, I think this was Lee, Lee, uh, Lee's, uh, uh, nephew, I think it was Lee Ellenberg. Yeah, I think it was. His name is Leo, so that's Leo. Yeah, and yeah. what a fantastic yeah. job you guys did on that one. That would have been done just in house, I would assume, right? Yeah, that was in house, you know, makeup artists mm -hmm. did it. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, there he is. Yeah, did you ever know Louis when he wrote on the show? Uh, I didn't know him. I knew he was on the show as yeah. one of the writers. Yeah. And like some of the other people that, that were there. Yeah. I knew them, you know, the, the writers, they stayed till like 10 o'clock at night, you know, yep. they're, Oh gosh, everybody was behind the scenes doing it. Let alone the edit people who were editing it to get it out on air that night. You know, yeah, everybody absolutely. put in lots of time, you know, <laughs> lived and breathed in our offices big family oh yeah you got that yeah there's the faucet yeah yeah that it turned that, out that, so beautifully that, yes yeah that, that that was um it 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 was very light you know it, it it was good it was that that was given away to his name was arlo by the way the the oh young yes that's person. sheila's son sheila's son yeah um yeah there's another shot of it there's yeah. downton abbey of course yeah and that was Haley. Um, yeah, Haley's her birthday. That's right. It was her birth. Oh man, you got a memory like a steel trap. That's exactly right. I it was hope her birthday so. that Gosh. day. Yeah, <laughs> I hope so. Yeah, she's um, beautiful. I love this one. Of, oh, he's cute. This one was just so fun. And I yeah, assume he, the chapstick is that foam that you were talking about. Yes, that that well, no, it's different. The chapstick barrel is made out of uh the mini cell phone. Okay. That is that is a packaging uh uh comes in big sheets like nine by uh six by nine by six. It's a a, a packaging uh um uh a material. Yeah uh, I I get that in Pennsylvania somewhere. But that foam is that foam you get out of the bottle you know, you go to the Home Depot, and you, and that's that styrofoam. That's oh, liquid. like a urethane type type deal. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You have to think of things that work. Now, yeah. I got a question about this one. Um, the child's name is Simon. That's not Barbara's Simon, is it? Oh yeah, isn't he cute? Is that? He's so cute. That so that's Barbara's yeah. son. Yeah, that's Barbara's son. Oh, that's adorable. He's as so soon as expressive. I saw the name was Simon, I wondered about it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's him. Little cute. Yeah, Dave talks to him. He felt he felt he knew him, so he 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 had struck up a good conversation with him. Absolutely. Yeah, and and I you wonder that like I always wondered that because some of the kids that there was a rapport uh, with, and you always yeah. wondered if those were the staff kids or not. Uh, this was a topical joke. I mean, again, another one that you can just do. This was the gal who Janet worked on Yellen. Obamacare. Yeah, but Janet L Yellen. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. She, yeah. To find a suit for her. Oh, this was a logistic uh, one that uh, got had to be changed out. And this is the makeup artist's uh, uh, son. Um, you know, inside that was all foam. And that was, I went to Chinatown to get a Lazy Susan. <laughs> you know, Chinatown, they have these Lazy Susans that they put in the middle of a table to yep. serve. Well, yep. I took the mechanism from that to which are ball bearings and a rod or circular circumferential rod. And I, I made that in there and they had it have a trap door. You see how that, that, that in itself, that costume uh, had to be helped in the door because uh, the nature of that costume had to be that size and cut yep. it down as much as I could. 
and he had to carry it. Yeah. And then the extra layer of the rotating meat, because the thing rotated. The 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 thing yes, was, it, it was rotated. a ro rotating slab of meat you can buy off yeah. the streets in New York. That was the yes. uh, yeah. That was the, but yeah, very very uh, detailed. And yeah, got a lot of, of drawings that on that. Yeah, I'll add the sketches a little bit later as well. This one I love, Vladimir oh, yeah. Putin on a horse. Of course, if you had a side view of of this little boy who happens to be Lucas. My grandson. <laughs> That's your grandson? Yes. Oh, Sue, you're breaking my heart. That's beautiful. <laughs> yeah, he's 16 now. But he, the uh, makeup artist, he was so good. Uh, we had to put this wig thing on his head. He was so patient, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and then oh. there's that uh, uh, skin, skin, flesh tone uh, bodysuit for him. Yep. Yep. And his legs are on the bottom. He goes through and he's walking, but he I got fake legs on the side of the horse. That that was hilarious. Oh, it's that's pretty, so great. Yeah, so hilarious. So so your memory, uh, your steel trap like memory is absolutely incredible. <laughs> Why don't we go back a little bit further now? Let's check out uh this is from 1986. Oh, yes. So there's Roger Ebert, and I love the thing yes. about Roger Ebert is they had two kids in for the Roger Ebert one. <laughs> okay. You know, they, 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 uh, the writers. Let me say, uh, that was funny for them. You know, <laughs> size of a person was funny for them. They, Absolutely. You no, know, listen, they're they're writing their heads off, and you you only have to say a joke once. Yep. That's the end of it. You know, you can repeat it. You know. Yeah, oh, I respect the writers doing that. Oh, and this so, is the overplug. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, socket. Yeah. A dangerously overloaded electrical socket played by Jocelyn. Yeah. And yeah. Jocelyn now would be in her, well, man, she'd be in her almost 40 years old now. Really? Really? She uh, would be at this point. So, Jocelyn, if you're out there, well done. That's great. Yeah, I think that, that was an actor, thing. actor kid. Yeah. yeah. Oh, pro, All yeah, those have to be made. Yeah. <laughs> All that's and again, that's that mini cell phone, light as it can be. Yeah. Every time I call the manufacturer Raleigh Foam, yeah. oh, it's that time of the year. You know. <laughs> yeah, I need five, ten sheets of this. You know. <laughs> um, a cocktail weenie. Yes, that's a long time ago. Yep. Yeah. This is all from the same year. This is all from 86. Yeah, all from 86 and around there. I was making them and hiring one of my uh, people that I knew that did that. So she was making all those. Do you know that bubble gum under the chair? That yes. I, don't yep. oh, I just think that concept was funnier than hell. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, this is the guy with all those plugs. Yeah. Get Recently divorced man with hair plugs. That's right. Yes. Yes. <laughs> now that's the, that kick gets off. So real... when you would get the list from the writers and, and, and whatnot, were there ever times where it would be like, oh, there's a relief there because there's a there's more costumes like that that you can kind of do in-house with a little thing as opposed to the bigger and whatnot. Like, like obviously the, some of those costumes are fairly simple for you. Yeah, they they are simple. Uh, you know, you, when I start out, I I, I start with the, the big mother load of of what what needs to be taken care of and uh, and 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 time wise, how long to get to construct. Yeah, yeah. But and I'm always thinking uh, about the simple ones and little girls. They're they're they're. You have to shop around town. I, I think I went to, into Brooklyn. You know, you, there was a, a shop. I don't think it's there anymore. Called Cookies. It had parochial school things and suits. Yep. You know, and 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 you and Macy's was the only other store that would have a ch children's department with suits. But to find one with a little color, I I I had to go down into into Fulton Street Cookies around there that that had all kinds of stuff. Um, and, uh, to this day, uh, I don't know where other people get suits for their little kids for communion and stuff like that. Cause <laughs> I think that's, 
why they existed. Yeah, you know? no, that makes sense. And to, uh, of course, uh, enhance the comedy of the David Letterman show. Um, so there's uh, a couple more from 86 I wanted to show you. One in particular that I just love. This one here. That's a stack of National Geographic magazine. Uh, well, graphics had to be done on the side. Yeah. But that idea is, is, is you know, funny. Make it a little uneven there. Yeah. But the process of making a costume like that back in 1986, completely different than 2006. Um, oh, yeah. You know, graphics back then were a much a very different animal than graphics later on, weren't they? Oh, yeah. You, you didn't. You know, when I got to an 84. I'd like to say an 84. That's yep. when everything was being turned over to computers to do graphics because the graphic designers used to hand do them with letter print. Yep. Remember the letter print? You'd go Absolutely. to our store and get letter print and do that. Yep. Yeah. And then we just Xerox all this um on 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 uh on the Xerox machine to multiply it. At one point I had to do big in a money jacket. Did you know that you cannot print money on a com on a on on a computer on a, on a copier? It, 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 it is you you have to change the size or something yep. because it can't be done. Yeah, it's uh, it's got to be parody money or or movie money, as they say. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah. yeah there's there's uh, see oh see these are the little things here. Um, yeah. That you have to be careful. Yeah, about. that fifty dollar bill had to be a little bigger. <laughs> yep. Um, yeah. Let's see here. This one here I really like. It oh gosh! Out. It's the Oak Ridge Boys. Oh yes. <laughs> and that was done in eighty six. That's a that long was eighty six as well. Yep. Oh, that's so long. I was doing all those myself because at that time I had no staff. Did you yeah. know? I just had a wardrobe my man that really did Dave and I just did everything myself. I hired a friend of mine who was a, a in that worked in um media shops and industrials uh, uh and hired her to help me out. And we'd spend late nights doing it in the building at NBC. At thirty rock. Lots of time spent in thirty rock. That's just Yes, so lots of times thirty rock. <laughs> Um, there's a McDonald's manager right there. Yes. 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 Again, very yeah. simple one. So there's a good example of going to see the, uh, going to that shop to get the kids little suits and ties and things like that. Yes. And he, mm -hmm. I think he's got himself a little, a little wig. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. You guys did a great job with him. Looks like, uh, almost, almost a Nick Offerman type, uh, type <laughs> hairdo there. <laughs> and this one, I love a pest. This is a, uh, uh, a pest oh. strip. Or a bug yeah, the, the bugs would get called on there. Yeah, I, I went to the joke store. You know, you can't find those bugs anymore. <laughs> I was going to ask. So those are th those were basically from a toy store or something like that? They don't exist. No. And I, I was just like, oh, gosh, I got this fly. It looks so good. <laughs> <laughs> I can't throw them away. <laughs> um, yeah. Sue, I appreciate you 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 doing this so much. I I just I really really do. Let's uh let's go back. Okay, I gotta ask the about the bra behind you, because uh, yes. I know that was part of a costume too. Do you remember which costume that was part of? Yeah, um, it was about that when the push up bra was starting to happen. Uh -huh. Two kids. This got cut, but I couldn't I couldn't throw it away. I farmed that out to someone else. I had two children in nude leotards. <laughs> so they were flesh tone and one on each side, strap. Yep. And um they cut that. They 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 they, they thought uh uh that was um uh, expediting children. Okay, so it was over the line. The censors cut that one. It wasn't the 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 writers or the the staff that cut it. It was the censors that cut it. Yeah, the censors yeah. cut it. You know, I I get 
I get the word and and I put so much time into making it scaled uh, <laughs> to the right that this is so old. It's sitting there. <laughs> and anybody who comes in this bedroom sleeps under this big red bra. <laughs> Where did that come from, they say? <laughs> oh, that's so great. What are some of the other things that you have saved from some of the costumes along the way? Uh, the four opter. That yep. is the, the examining. Yep. Uh, behind me is this... Uh, at the supermarket where you touch and write your name for the credit and run your credit card down. Yep. Yep. That that's there. Uh I I have a Chiquatro razor blade a thing that I thought it was so funny <laughs> that I, I I just couldn't throw it away. It was done very well. Yeah. Uh Clinton's heart. Uh and it I I had a heart and it was it's it's really done up well. And I actually went to NYU and, and uh, my general practitioner said, oh, go, you can go to this heart surgeon. He'll show you uh, about the vein and everything where yep. the by, bypasses. So I went there and, and of course that got cut, but I saved the heart. So much work was put into a three-dimensional heart, you know? Oh, that's and so then cool. And then you remember Fridays? Remember yep. Fridays? Yeah. Well, Fridays no longer. Well, you know, Fridays used to be a. De they used to decorate their uh, walls with with lamps and guitars and stuff like that and picture frames. I got one of those, and I have the big ass ham. You have a big ass ham. You have the big ass I, ham costume. Yeah, uh, the original big ass ham. That's fantastic. Don Giller is very jealous right now, as are a whole bunch of other Letterman collectors. That is a very, very cool thing to have. I, oh, I, that's I, great. I don't know what to do with it. It, um, it. It's in my storage and it takes up so much room. You know, I'd like to give it to the mu a museum, but, you know, I don't know who would would give me the time of the day for that. You know, I don't know. I'm looking around my studio right now going, hmm, I wonder how much room that would take. <laughs> oh, that is so cool you have that. That's great. Yeah, I did that myself, Big M. Yeah. With, with, I, I used to have, uh, uh, I did have uh, interns yep. from art schools. And this one girl, Johanna, was from my alma mater, Moore College of Art. Yep. And so we, we, if you want to really know, I had no workspace. I did all my costumes on the floor in the hallway by the elevator. <laughs> That's what I did. It's so yeah. funny, too, because you think it would be the opposite. You know, as the show got bigger and bigger and bigger, that you would be given a bigger space. Uh, you know, once you get to the Ed Sullivan Theater, you, you'd think that that would be grown because the rest of the show grew. But your part actually kind of your your facility kind of shrunk. Well, it it just stayed the same, and that's the same with the, with the props with Ruth. Yeah, Ruth Siegel. Yep. Same. They only gave her a cage. You know, that's it. That's it. But you know, it it was all about writers. Yes. And the and production office. Uh, their naivety, <laughs> their naivety about what we do. Uh, and the space is needed for that yep. Yep. as a profession, you know, um, they were just thinking about writing and moving over and Dave's big deal of going to CBS. This is a big deal. Yes. Big deal. That, that political chiching po politics, who Dave learned a lot from that. Absolutely. Um, it was a time in history and, and it's just such a fascinating thing. Um, before we kind of close up this episode, thank you so much for coming back. We appreciate this so much. We would love to make this sort of a tradition where we go over some of these things. I mean, really at the end of the day, we went over your sketches and we went over a couple of years, but there are 32 years of segments of this that we could go through. I hope you come back one day and we can talk about some more of these amazing costumes that you did because really at the end of the day, they were, they were only there for one segment and then they were gone, like you said, into the yeah. trash can. 
Yeah. I would uh, I would love to bring it back out and talk to you about them some more and get some of these memories. Again, I'm astounded by your memory, Sue. It's amazing. Well, thanks. I'm 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 glad it's intact. <laughs> <laughs> um once again, oh, and you know what? I'm doing kind of this uh this this tour with people who um you know, because Rupert just recently retired. Rupert yes. May sold the deli. Um, you couldn't be at the, at there that night. You were out of town, which is, which is too bad, but I know that you oh, love them very much. Yeah. And, yeah. um, any, any messages for Rupert May? Cause Rupert, hello dash deli.com still sponsors the Letterman podcast. So is there oh. uh, any, any messages for Rupert or May? Rupert, I would always run down there and May had them say, I said, make me a Chinese breakfast. And you know what a Chinese breakfast is? Tell me. Steam rice, uh, a um, lightly turned over egg, yeah, uh, soy sauce and Tabasco, and you mix that all up together. Yep, that was good. And he would do it. He would do it, no problem. Yeah, yeah, because you know, I I didn't real I didn't really eat half the time because I was busy. Yeah, you know? but uh, that's the only thing I thought was nutritional. That I could stick to my ribs until I get home. Yeah, it filled me up. Well, there you and go. I, and I, I, I will see them. They are, they are the most. They're good. They're good. I, I'm glad they're retiring. You know. Um, I'm very happy for them as well. It's obviously a, you know, a, a sad thing that that deli that was there for so long is gone now. But I'm so happy for Rupert and May that they're on the other side of it and. Uh, and have so much joy and so many good memories for it. Thank you very much for talking about that. Yeah. Um, before we close up, is there anything else that you had thought about wanting to talk about today? Oh, well, I, I'm, you know, let's see, eight years are going on nine years and, and the show has, has, is gone. Yep. Uh, I, uh, we set the bar and Dave set the bar for other talk shows. And when you look at the reruns and YouTube, just so glad I was part of it. I didn't realize when I was there that uh, this show would uh, be, uh, I don't know. Um, Revered? More more than revered. It it it, it just uh, there's nothing like Dave's humor. I tell you, how does he come off of that? <laughs> off that's that's a genius. That's a genius. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, very very well said. Uh, until the next time you come back on the Letterman podcast. Thank you very much. She is so oh, hum. Thanks uh, for asking me. Oh, anytime and every yeah. time. This won't be the yeah, last. Good time to see too. you. Oh, it's yeah. good to see you again too. I'll do a quick outro and then uh, we'll say our goodbye privately. So just stay uh, stay there. Um, that's why we do this show is to get the ins and outs of what we consider to be the greatest body of broadcasting work in history, that of David Letterman and company. This has been another episode of the Letterman Podcast with Mike Chisholm. Coincidentally, I am Mike Chisholm. Thank you and good night. Overcoat and underpants. <laughs>